Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Schnoiki, and today I'm going to show you how to use this amazing Blender add-on called Physical Celestial Objects, and it basically lets you create accurate planets on a real scale, like they're as big as they would be. This is an amazing add-on and I highly recommend it, so let's get started and see how it works. The first thing you're going to want to do is click on the affiliate link in the description to bring you to this page on BlenderMarket.com, and this is the add-on, Physical Celestial Objects, and if you scroll down here you can find uh, all the amazing things you can do and just these incredible pictures that you can make with this add-on. Right now when this video is coming out, you can get 50% off the product, and this is a really Really good deal because these add-ons are extremely high quality and I already made a tutorial on physical starlight and atmosphere which is also an incredible add-on and many people decided to get it uh, so if you're interested in that that's in the top right this add-on already has 500 plus sales and it's only been published for around two months so that just shows you the customer demand for add-ons like this also worth mentioning is this add-on is meant for blender version 3.3 so you might want to update to that if you haven't already once you've decided to buy this add-on, go over here to the purchase button on the right. Once you've put in your information and bought the add-on, it should show up under orders on the top right account drop-down. Click on that, and once you see it here, you can click on go to downloads. And here are the different blend files. As you can see, there are some planet blend files here, but you're going to want to start with this zip file. So you're going to click on that, and it will automatically start downloading. Once you've downloaded that zip file, open up a new Blender window and start by deleting the default cube because nobody likes that thing. Then go to the top left here, click on Edit, Preferences, and Add-ons. If you haven't used Blender add-ons before, you might want to go up here to the search bar and type in Node Wrangler. Uh, and check that box. That's a very important uh, add-on to have selected. Once you've done that, it's time to install the Physical Celestial Objects add-on. So what you're going to want to do is go up here to the Install button and find your file. I found my file here in my Downloads folder, so now I'm going to click that and click Install Add-on. Now the add-ons page is going to automatically put Physical Celestial Objects into the search bar you're going to click this checkbox and now it's enabled. I'm now going to exit out of this window and once again this add-on is meant for Blender version 3.3 and above and right now I'm using Blender 3.4 but as long as you're at 3.3 or a version beyond that you'll be okay. Next go to the scene tab on the right, go up to the top tab, make sure your render engine is set to Eevee and that viewport denoising is turned off because PCO already does viewport denoising for you. Now up here in the top right of the screen right by the axis is this tiny little arrow and you're gonna click that and you're gonna see these tabs on the right and down at the very bottom you can see PCO I'm gonna click that and click this checkbox to enable it now that's enabled I'm gonna go up here to the viewport view settings and go to rendered preview so that we can see what we're working with uh, and then I'm going to click Add New Planet in the Physical Celestial Objects window. Now we can scroll out a bit, and here is our planet. And the interesting thing is that it's not an actual object in the scene. I can't select it. It's actually a shader. Uh, so it works as this massive planet, but it doesn't have all of the rendering baggage that comes with having this big of an object in the scene. Now this admittedly isn't the most impressive planet, so I'm going to go over here to the settings. I'm going to change the radius to, let's say, 3000 meters. I can't see the planet anymore. Scroll out. And there we go, now it's looking much more like an actual planet. If I change the position on this planet, let's say making it 7,000 meters away, uh, now when we zoom into our scene and we look around, there is the massive planet in the distance. And you can leave the planet shading the way it is, or you can go up here to Add, Light, and Sun. Click on that, and then go up here to this section in the PCO tab, click it, and click Sun. And now when you move this little dot down here, I'll move it so it's easier to see, this little dot on the sunlight will change the angle to which this is going. Change the Z direction to a thousand meters, or let's say 19,000 meters, because that happened. Uh, and now it's just a really nice planet in the sky. Uh, it, it's just such a cool add-on because it's very easy to use. And here you can change the albedo color, so I'm going to change it to red uh, and 
you've got a red planet in the sky. So for making space scenes, this is an incredibly helpful tool. You can also go down here to the very bottom of the PCO tab and click procedural for rings. Now our planet has rings. That's so cool. You can mess around with the settings here. If you increase scale, it increases the amount of rings that are present in the scene. You can change all of these other settings like inner radius, outer radius, indirect shadow factor, and translucency. You can also change to make them slightly more opaque. And you can play with these settings to your heart's content to find a planet that works best for your scene. And just to show you what this add-on is capable of, you can go back to the downloads page and click on one of these blend files to see what it looks like. I downloaded the Earth blend file, so I'm gonna open that up. In this scene, you'll see this test ball in the middle, but once you go to the render preview window, and it'll take a second to load, you can now use the axis to move around find where the earth is that is the earth if i've ever seen the earth that is it i mean that's just an amazing looking planet and again you don't have any actual geometry so it's in the scene and it shows up in the rendered view but it's not taking up all of those polygons because to render that thing uh with it being an actual object would be just impossible or impractical. And if you want to copy the textures on this earth, go back to the downloads page and click on the readme.txt file. Down here, you'll see the links to all of the albedo slash color links. And this readme file has everything you need to get started with the add-on. But basically, all of these textures are available here in the form of links. And of course, copying the parameters for this earth in the PCO section on the right, like the radius of that many meters and the position of those and all of the textures here, if you copy those, you'll get a similar result. But that's just a small taste of what this add-on can do and it should make your space renders or anything involving planets more streamlined and better looking in general. I hope you all enjoyed this short tutorial on how to use the Physical Celestial Objects add-on and I hope that your renders coming from this look absolutely amazing. And again, if you want to buy this product, consider using the affiliate link in the description because it supports me and it really helps a lot. But yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Schnoik out.